Teach, aka Mr. Break It Down, and you're watching the season two finale of I Ain't So Cool. It's been such a dope ride during this new season of the show, and as I did last time, I want to truly and sincerely thank each and every one of you for your support since day one. Now that we got all the mushy stuff out the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. We're watching the Amazon Prime Video original film coming to America. Let's get it! Unfortunately rated PG-13 with a runtime of approximately 1 hour and 48 minutes, Coming to America features comedic legend Eddie Murphy, who reprises his role as the African monarch Akeem, who suddenly learns that he has a bastard son in the United States and must return to America to meet this unexpected heir and build a relationship with him to keep the Zamundan traditions alive. All right, so boom. Wow. It's really been 33 long years since the cult classic first stepped on the scene and provided all his viewers with some of the most hilarious, iconic, and most quotable characters and lines of what I believe to be comedic film history. I bet you all I need to do is show you this picture and you know exactly what to say and do. That being said, I think this film sort of struggled between leaning into their original characters for a laugh and introducing new characters that I'm sure the writers wanted the audience to appreciate just as much, if not more. While we're on the subject of new characters, let's speak on a few of them, shall we? Wesley Snipes was brilliant at General Izzy. To me, he really balanced the challenge of being funny and menacing at the same damn time. Both Leslie Jones and Tracy Morgan basically played themselves in Zamunda, which to be honest was exactly what I wanted from them. Nothing more, nothing less. And Jermaine Fowler's character was stable, but not memorable enough to me especially with the film insinuating the focus was truly on him. The film in actuality was about Prince Akeem's royal transition into becoming as well respected a king as his father was. I honestly like the idea behind the true plot, but that did beg two questions from me. It really took y'all 30 years to come up with that idea, and you truly believed in your heart of hearts we needed the sequel? The long wait, even the actual timing behind the filming of the project for sure affected how some things were portrayed. One of the cool things about the fictional country in the original film was how grand it looked, outside and inside the palace. Now, no disrespect whatsoever to Ricky Rose and his absolutely stunning mansion, which was used as the palace for the film, but I honestly think we were cheated and experienced. Now, to me, a lot of the celebratory scenes were noticeably much, much smaller in scale, which I can only surmise was for sure a product of this Papa John's pizza we're in called COVID-19. Listen, I'm sorry, not sorry, y'all, but when it comes to our classic film and television series being rebooted or given a sequel, I'm just a strong advocate for leaving it the f alone sometimes. That goes double for the gym that is Harlem Nights. Overall, I thought the film was cool. Not as many funny moments as I hoped for, but certainly a ton of unexpected and truly recognizable cameos that for sure had to show me and I'm sure some of the more astute viewers where the majority of the film's budget went. I give coming to America three out of five booms. That's my time, y'all. Hopefully, I'll see you sooner than later. Peace.